Hi, my name is Jared Broad, and today we're going to be walking through the Buy and Hold with Equities Bootcamp. In this bootcamp, you're going to learn how to set cash, set a date range, check your holdings, and to place an order, all the fundamentals of an algorithm. To start, click the Start button on the lesson, and then you'll see the lesson summary. The first task is at the top of the lesson content here. And then when you open a task, you'll see on the left, there's documentation relevant to the bootcamp. And in the middle, there's the code where you'll put your answers. And down the bottom, you can see the results of your code. So this first task is asking us to set the starting cash for our algorithm. Quant Connect allows you to set a starting cash that your algorithm will use in backtesting. To do that, you use set cash, and then you pass in a number for what you'd like to set it to. Underneath, this is being set to a cash book and is defaulting to US dollars. Our cash books maintain an array of different currencies, and you can actually do different Forex backtesting as well. So here, now we've set our cash, and we're going to submit the answer and see how we go. Awesome. And just like that, we've completed our first task, and we're ready to move on to the next one. So for the next one, we're going to be setting a date range for our, our algorithm. To set a date range, you use the set start date and set end date fields. Here, you set the year, month, and day for your algorithm. And we're going to change it to the dates requested here, which is January the 1st, 2017 to October the 31st. So 2017 and January 1st. Okay. And just like that, let's submit our results and see how we go. Perfect. On to the next task. Now we're going to be manually selecting data for our algorithm. This is the most fundamental way of selecting data with Quant Connect. So to do that with US equities, you just call the add equity method. You can see here that the add equity method takes a resolution, the ticker, and along with a number of other parameters that you can set. QuantConnect has a large data library, and most of our data comes in resolutions all the way from tick, second, minute, hour, all the way up to daily, and you can access that with these methods. So the objectives for this task say to set minute resolution data for SPY. So here we've got the resolution enum, and we can change that to minute, and we're asking for SPY. And the next question says ask for minute resolution data for IWM. So we're going to ask for that. So if you note here, I've returned this object. When you call add equity, you actually get the security object back. This can be useful for later tasks. So let's see how we went. We'll submit the answer and wait for it to process. When you submit a backtest with Quant Connect, you're taking the code that you're writing here and sending it off to our clusters to be backtested on our data. And there we go. We've finished the task. Okay, on to the next one. Quant Connect data by default is adjusted. This means that it's already been changed to account for splits and dividends. This can result in a large number of decimal places to reflect those splits and dividends over time. This isn't a bug, but it's just the way the data is being processed to make it easier to use. If you'd like, you can ask for data in raw mode. And in this mode, the raw price is pumped into your algorithm and the splits and dividends are paid directly into your portfolio. So to do that, you use the set data normalization mode helper. So we've got it here. And you can see here it's saying to change the data normalization mode of SPY to raw. If you notice, we're applying this data normalization helper directly on the security object. Okay, and the sixth, second task is security.set leverage. So it's asking us to set the leverage for IWM to one, so we can do it the same way. Okay, let's see how we go. Awesome, another task complete. Let's move on to the next one. With Quant Connect, we concentrate your holdings into your portfolio. 
the portfolio has a number of helper methods to make it easier to understand your algorithm. So if you see here, it has methods like invested, total unrealized profit, total portfolio value, and you can access them with a dictionary by the ticker. So in the task objectives for this one, we need to add equity by VM instead of SPY. Easy so far. And now it's saying we need to print out the number of shares of IBM that we own. So to do that, we can use the quantity and we can place that here to fix that error message. So if you notice here, we're using the string wrapper to wrap the quantity. This is because quantity is a number and the debug is looking for a string. So if we just wrap that number with string, we can send that message out. Let's submit the answer and see how we go. Awesome, another task done. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, we're finally at placing orders. This is going to pull together everything we've learned so far. We're going to look at our portfolio, we're going to add data, we're going to set data normalization mode, and then finally place a trade. So, to submit an order, we can use the helper self.marketorder. And with that, you pass in the ticket and the number of shares you'd like to trade. To get the average fill price of that, you can use average price. This is the average price of your holdings for that ticker. So for the first objective, it's saying in ad equity, ask for IAWM at minute resolution. Okay. And it's saying to set the data normalization mode to raw. So if you remember, it makes it helpful if we return and save the security object. Okay, great. So now we've set the data normalization mode to raw. In on data, place a method, place an order with set self market order for 100 shares of IWM. So if you notice here, we've asked for minute resolution data, and every minute we're going to be placing a market order for IWM. We've got to place some restrictions on that so it's not quite so uncontrolled. So it's saying to use the portfolio invested to make sure that we're only placing one order. So we can do something like this. Okay, awesome. And now it's asking us to print the average price of IWM to the console. So to do that, we can use the self.debug method. And if you remember, we can access the portfolio here to get the average price. So here, average price is still a number. So we need to convert it back to a string so that the debug method can read it. So here, we're going to place string to convert that number to a string. Okay, I think we've done everything. Let's see how we go. Awesome. So we've just added data, we've set the data normalization mode, we've accessed our portfolio, checked what we're holding, and then used that to make decisions. Congratulations, you've finished the first bootcamp, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.